الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله Many people ask, or one of the questions that was recently posed was why are Salafis in such a disarray and discord? How come they have so much fitna if they're on the haq? Why is there so much trials and tribulations within their da'wah? People attacking one another's honor. People wasting time, not benefiting in their lives, not setting an example, not going forward, not building anything. Not even effectively calling to the book in the sunnah. Why is that the case? And I think what's kind of implicit in that, in answering that, is first and foremost, I believe that there truly is a lot of confusion over what Salafiyah is. Meaning that there are many people who call, but do not either understand the principles of Ahl sunnah And what it means to call to the book in the sunnah. And they forget the usul of Ahlul Sunnah and the usul of the da'wah of Allah. And the usul of the message of Islam. And we know the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned Islam is on five pillars. So if you want to know what the usul the usul of Ahlul Sunnah is. It's going back to those five pillars of Islam. And if you want to know about the itiqad and the creed of Ahl Sunnah, it's going back also to the Hadith of Jibreel, alayhi salatu salam, and going to the pillars of Iman, and tu'mina billahi wa malaikati wa kutubihi wa rasulihi wa liyawm al-akhwa, tu'mina bi qadri khayrihi wa shar. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi said that Iman, faith, is to believe in Allah, Believe in his angels. Believe in his books and his messengers, alayhim afdhu salatu wasalam. And believing in the day of judgment. And believing in the divine creed, the qadr, the khair and the shar. Look at this giant toad, subhanAllah. It's like, what in the world is that? This is the usul of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah and the creed of Ahl Sunnah. And likewise, from the usul of Ahl Sunnah is Rad al Makhalif, is refuting those that oppose the methodology and the creed of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. That in the hadith, First and foremost, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al kareem and orders us with unity. That's from the usul of Ahlul Sunnah. Wa'atasamu bi hablillahi jami'an wa la tafarraku. Adhere all of you steadfast to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not divide. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us with what? Commands us with division? Commands us with disunity? La. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the asl. If we want to talk about the asl, because people love this word asl. If we want to talk about the foundation, it goes... In that ayah where Allah Tabarak Ta'ala, he commands with what? There's a command and there's a prohibition. There's a isbat wa nafi. Or there's a emr and there is a nahi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands. The emr, emr means he commands. He commands us with what? He commands us with unity. He commands us to hold all of us steadfast to the Quran and to the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu This is what we mean by the hablillah. And that means adhere what? To various interpretations, la. That we should be one and have the interpretation which is sound, which is coming from the book and the sunnah, and how the sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, anhum ajma'in, how they practiced. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, wala tafarraku. So then there was a prohibition in the ayat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, what? Do not divide. So division is madhmuma. 
Division is something which is sinful. It's something which Allah is not pleased with. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is getting to the crux of what we, what we wanted to talk about, قال صلى الله عليه وسلم افتركت اليهود على إثنى وسبعين فرقة وافتركت النصارى على إثنتين وسبعين فرقة وافترك وافتركت هذه وافتركت اليهود على إثنى وسبعين فرقة وافتركت النصارى على إثنتين وسبعين فرقة وستفترك هذه أمة على ثلاثة وسبعين فرقة. So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said the Jews were breaking the seventy-one sects, Christians seventy-one sects. His أمة. The Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu meaning the Muslims were breaking the 73 sects. Kullaha finnara al-wahida. All of them in the fire, except one. They said, who are they, Ya Rasulullah? Now, men here, Ya Rasulullah, who are they? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ya Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, those who are upon what I'm upon and what my Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, ajma'een, were upon. He said, those who are upon... The sunnah of his sahaba. You know, that's where they, they understand their Islam. That's where they take their understanding, their methodology of understanding the divine text, the practice, the manners, everything, everything in Islam. It's not that we can take our political ideologies and our philosophies from Marxism, Leninism, uh, from Hitlerism, whatever, and from foreign ideologies... Black Panther Party and apply that to Islam. La Abidin. Islam is complete. And we have to adhere back to that divine interpretation. It's divine because the Prophet ﷺ said it's the minhaj, it's the way. It's the way for your salvation. That's a saved group. So the problem is, getting back to the question, is that so many people have taken aspects of the da'wah to Salafiyyah, what suits them, emphasize aspects which they accuse the Hizbis of doing, and the Hizbis do that. The Hizbis take part of Islam. Look at the jihadi takfiris. Jihadis, they claim to love jihad, but they really take a, a worldview based on many foreign ideologies, you know, revolutionary movements. If you look at the works of Maududi, Said Qutb, Hassan al Benna, you'll see how the foundation, because they wrote in a time of political turmoil and, and revolutions and world and, and world ideologies that were prominent in those times, and they were rejecting those ideologies, but trying to make tawfiq between those ideologies and Islam. Instead of pure Dao to Ahl Sunnah, which would have come from Elm. None of them were known for being ulama. Maududi, no. Said Qutb was a great prolific writer in the Arabic language. He was a, a literist, I guess you would say. Uh, you know, someone who was, um, you know, anyway, a prolific writer in the Arabic language. Um, they both did tafsir or Quran. And Hassan al-Benna also was not a learned man, meaning that in-depth Islamic education. And so they operated the tools they had and deviated due to those facts, factors. My point of Habit Tafillah is the reason, one of the reasons for our, our misunderstandings and the fitna that comes between us is taking aspects of the deen and leaving off aspects. For example, many of the brothers in the past and callers did not know how to differ. And they still don't know how, how, to, how to deal with differences. Because no human, be human beings are not going to be the same in the way they see the world. That's just the reality. That's just the reality. So when an alam, when they are taken from the same foundation principles, which they see the same, there's going to be difference in understanding there's going to be differences in some aspects of interpretation so it comes down to knowing when there's permissible differences and when there's impermissible differences and how to deal with those differences and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil 
and bless us with a proper understanding and practice. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.